Welcome, everybody, to episode 203. Ding, 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 ding. Lucky number 203. This is going to be a great show. I can't wait. I'm really pumped to get yes. into it. Yes. <laughs> it's the two, sh- <laughs> two sessions special. So I got my pen. Yeah. You know, uh, who's that uh, sports presenter? No, I he don't know. He always goes like this. I, I don't watch starts, sports. So. Oh, he's like a... Is he's it like a, John Madden? No, no, no. He's, he does like all <laughs> sports. Pat okay. McAfee. Okay. Anyway, he always mm-hmm. goes like this. He's like... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's the reason cool I have this, yes. <laughs> yeah. And the reason is because the two sessions is basically our Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Um, how can anybody in the world pay attention to something so utterly boring? Well, we make it interesting. The two sessions is China's most important political event of the year. Yes. Every year. They think the whole world is watching. They think the they, world cares about it, but they don't. They project. Yeah. What, what is it? It's called projection. Yeah, it's I called pro- uh, this. Projection! And they want everyone to pay attention to this boring political meeting where two branches of the same government come together and decide on things they've already decided. Yes, exactly. Now, before we even start, I just wanted to give you a little teaser. We're not just talking about the two sessions. That's what we're going to start with. But China's had to swallow a couple of bitter pills of its own medicine. This being one of them, I'll just show it to you quickly. So, uh, sorry, what you're seeing there, never mind this, what you're seeing there is a Chinese state television CCTV reporter being bullied off the scene by the police, being harassed and dragged off. Uh, just like we saw last week with the Dutch reporter not being able to report on something. Well, the Dutch reporter makes sense because China has foreigner. the worst freedom of press rating other than North Korea in the whole world. Yes. So a foreign reporter, of course, is going to get shooed away. But this yeah. is a state reporter. Yeah, their own state media. <laughs> sent there to do yes, it. Right? Was censored and pulled away. We've got a whole segment on that. We've got a whole segment on the whole TikTok ban. That's coming, okay? Yes. But we've got to start out with the two sessions. And even before the two sessions, I'm going to saunter right into it with what's new, where we talk about what's new in China, show you a couple of clips. Um, and we got some fantastic stuff for you today. So I wanted to show you something here. Okay. I haven't seen this, but okay. I can already tell you this. There is something definitely being given away for free. <laughs> you <laughs> guessed just, it. I can just okay. look at this so, and I know. Let's play. <laughs> <laughs> if I see Ais and Shushus, these like middle to old people, aged people, yeah. scrambling to go somewhere, yeah. you know there's something You know for something's going to be for free. So they, these are the, the sort of, we call them the, the last generation. Yeah. Okay, so they're all in their like late 50s, 60s, uh, 70s, thereabouts. And well, I like to call them grab hags yeah. for a reason. Whenever there's something for free or discount, they like just go for it. They'll, they'll literally climb over each other to get something. <laughs> so uh, let me just explain to you what was happening there is this is according I, I thought that was like a progression no, like, no, no, no. <laughs> like, and then, no, and then. And then they go up a mountain no <laughs> no uh, apparently what was happening was there was a sale going on here and you'd get a free egg <laughs> <laughs> you should have me guess yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, it's my, true the craziest one i saw and you've seen this too yeah. was uh in multiple occasions was a free bottle of the water free bottle of in water. summer yes waiting for hours mm-hmm. to get a free bottle of water like this big yeah so you've already sweated all out yeah but this is an egg. At least yes. this is something you can eat. Yeah, but it's only one, one egg. egg. No, the thing is that the, the bottle of water thing egg was... Egg rush. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The bottle of water thing was hilarious because that I remember specifically the one that I saw and with my own eyes. They were having a real estate... You know, they have those... Mine, mine was a real estate Yeah, thing. there's like... Yeah. So they ha- they're opening up a new project and they want to get people there to see the new project to invest. But the people lining up for two hours to get that free bottle of water, they're not buying shit. No. <laughs> they would la- if you ask them, they'd be like, of course not. <laughs> but they'll light up for two yeah. hours in the sweltering sun, sweat out all the water that they're going to get from that one free bottle. Anyway. So, by uh, the way, younger people would never do no, this. No, no, this no. Is, again, this is the Mao era people that grew mm-hmm. up starving and fighting tooth and nail to get a little bit of food. So yeah. to them, this is like, of course it's worth it, right? Absolutely. What kind of egg do you think it was? Was it... I have no idea. You don't know what kind of egg it was? You mean, could have maybe been one of uh, oh, yeah. these ones? 
<laughs> I don't think it was. I think that was too expensive. No, exactly. Anyway, um, speaking of uh, going on holiday in China, I don't know. Well, we're not speaking about that. But if you do go on holiday in China, it's a little uh, bit of a holiday. So yeah, and yeah. if you go to a tourist site. Mm -hmm. Don't go on the weekends and don't go during holidays. Uh, but Winston, why why do you say this? Well, <laughs> here's a good example. This is a, a famous scenic spot where you climb up the mountain and see a nice view, right? Okay. That looks fun. <laughs> it's literally you're just queuing. You're queuing to go up a mountain in a massive queue. I'm going to drive through bumper to bumper traffic to go to a place where I'm going to stand in line. Yes. I mean, that again, for those of you who cannot see this correctly, it is a massive queue of just, it's a solid line all the way up the mountain, up these steps. There's actually something at the top. Yes. Did you know? Yeah, it's this new job that's opened. No, it's what? actually an egg. <laughs> <laughs> There's one egg. Yeah, there might be an egg up there. Anyway, just saying like that, this is the problem with traveling uh, domestically in China. Yeah. Is because of the sheer amount of people that you have in China. Um, if a place is famous and people have time off, they're all going to go there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's a beach or if it's a scenic mountain spot or a hot springs or whatever. And if you try to go there... You may as well not, yeah. because you're not going to see the actual attraction. You're literally just going to see a crowd of people. Yeah, It's horrible. You're not wrong. Yeah. Anyway, there's a new job that's opened up at one of these tourist places that I thought oh. uh, you might like. Let's have a look. Oh. <laughs> so this is what they're going to see. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, it is a rock. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this is demeaning. Uh, yeah, so, so for those of you who don't know... <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. The Monkey King, okay? You had to pause it there. <laughs> yeah. You thought about So it. the Monkey King is, of course, the, the most famous uh, character in China, really. It's really the only one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So when you go to China, you hear about Journey to the West, which is the the most famous sort of novel and legend in China. And it's yeah. about the monkey king um, and a monk and yeah. a, a dude who, like a, a kind of a, what do you call I, it? I playboy most people, most people playboy who gets turned into a pig. pig yeah. and, and they have bad, to go yeah. to the West to go look for some Buddhist scrolls. Because, you know, Buddhism came from uh, India yeah. into China. So anyway, this guy, this monkey king, he is apparently born from a rock. So we'll call yeah, so Sun Wukong, this guy. So he was born out of a rock. Yeah. So in this particular tourist <laughs> attraction, he's sitting in his rock, presumably the one he was born from. Ah. Okay. Ah. And you get to feed him. <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> so this is a job where you you sit there and you have to eat whatever, whatever they give whatever you. the tourists That's give you. That's not unhygienic at all. Well, I mean, for instance, I'd be feeding them locusts and stuff, <laughs> you know, just this, to see how far I could push it. This kid is shoving Actually, a cucumber in his mouth. I'm sure he likes that. <laughs> And some like they bring actual <laughs> monkeys to fight with him. And I like how they're <laughs> feeding him spicy tofu. So you're saying this is a rock womb. His head is poking out of presumably what his mother's genitalia. Yeah, I guess so. And, and he's being fed. He's li you literally birth. dress up like a monkey and sit in a rock and kids force feed you all day. <laughs> Monk bang, dude. <laughs> Monk bang. <laughs> this is a China only thing, okay? This could only happen in China. This, this is, is absurd. <laughs> if yeah. you explain this to someone, no yeah. one would think it's that crazy. But when you see it, yeah, because you realize how many people are going to show up to do dude, this. Dude, <laughs> you saw that queue, that queue coming up the mountain. It could literally be a queue of people like that trying to it feed could. you. That's freaking... probably the queue. Ah, shoving bananas down your throat and whatever else is being fed to you. Wow! Yeah. He certainly just saves money on food, though. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to give him meals. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't... He looks so... Sad. Un, unimpressed with what's going Would on. Would you be impressed? And look at that pile of trash in front of his stone now. Can you see? There's like empty cartons of crap and whatever. What else, else would there be? <laughs> it's like you're eat this, eat this monkey boy. Birth through the litter pile. 
<laughs> Imagine crawling out of there at the end of the day. You got all these tofu packets and stuff stuck to you, and you, you have to roll out. It's like, oh man, dude, monk bang is real. <laughs> it really is. Anyway, just thought you might be interested. I it, hadn't seen it. It pays really well, by the way. Does it? Yeah. <coughs> I'd hope so. Apparently, it's like a thousand dollars a month. Oh, okay. Yeah, Which that's, is that's great ridiculous. for China. That's yeah. ins- that's like three times what n- recent grads are making in big cities. Yes, it's true. So that's huge. I mean, now he has to eat a whole thing of instant noodles. Dante says that's literally the worst job ever created. <laughs> I know. Look at this poor guy. You're stuck in a rock crevice <laughs> a rock. the whole day. Let's be honest. It's a rock vagina. Yeah, well, I mean, whatever. You're stuck in this stupid rock thing, shoving your face with whatever is given to you. Now he has to eat these instant noodles. No one, hey, that's bull, by the way. No what? one's feeding him. That's the whole gimmick, is that you feed yeah. him. Well, somebody gave him that. Oh, okay, they, gotcha. You saw him, like, they're like, here, eat this. And he's like, okay. You can tell he's like, I don't want to eat that. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, um, let's get into our segment, Beyond the Great Firewall. And this is the stuff that's going on on the Chinese internet that you don't see. Yes. Okay. So what did you prepare for us this week? So, uh Pretty funny trend going around in China. It's actually just one account that's kind of blowing up. Okay. And I have to preempt this because there's a lot of lore behind it. Okay. So looking into this, this uh, this is called uh, Zhuo Moren, uh, but mm-hmm. there are accounts called Zhou, uh, Zhou Gongjin to, uh, 2021. Okay. And the, the storyline behind this is that there's a one gang leader. Okay. Uh, a Bang Zhu, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and he basically forces his servants yes. or his employees, right, yeah. to do things for him. But... Because in China, like a, a mafia gang leader or whatever, will still be stuck in their old ways, probably from the countryside. Yeah. They don't have, they have money, but they don't have a taste for fancy things. Right. Right. You get that. Yeah, that. It's yeah, almost yeah. like a too hao thing. Yeah, exactly. Like a, like a lot of money, but poor taste. Yeah. Nouveau riche. Nouveau riche, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. what happens is, is in all these skits, his servants, who are obviously like basically mm-hmm. his paid employees, have to do things for him, but they're all stuck in the old ways, right? right. They're all kind of like mm-hmm. low class things. Mm-hmm. And it's just pretty funny. Okay. It's actually pretty funny. Well, let's so see. These particular videos have been taken off. Let's have a look. Okay, I'll get us out of here so you can see the full thing. So let's in this clip, he's preparing Oh, this fancy tea. tea ceremony. Yeah, you know, this is uh, ubiquitous around China. Um, yeah. Drinking tea, tea, he cha, and there's always tea tools and a special way to prepare it. And even like the lowest class kind of tea drinking setup, they still do some of the ceremony. Yeah, you know? for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, so here his servants are um, not particularly good at the tea well, ceremony. Let's, let's, but this looks like an advert for that <laughs> bottled tea. I know. So that stuff is mad to, sweet, by the way. It's holy crap. in a bottle. Yeah, we used to drink it. It's bad. I used and it's, to avoid it because, like, I, I would mm-hmm. drink it a few times, and it literally just makes me have acid reflux. It has something like glucose or something in it, which gives you yeah. that, like, almost mint overpowering yes. thing. Yes. What is that? I know exactly yeah. what you're talking it's about. It's really bad. So it's, like, sweet, and then it also has that It's very extra... effervescent almost. <laughs> yeah, it's really bad. Anyway. Don't drink that if you have a choice. So I got skeptical. Oh. Like, as funny as this is, this looks awfully like a keep, you can keep playing. Okay. It looks awfully like an ad for uh, Bing Hong Cha. This, yeah, this, this yeah. Is yeah, Bing Hong Cha. Uh, ice. Kung Fu. ice anyway tea yeah. yeah this is another another clip so yeah. again can't take the rich mm-hmm. gang guy away from his old ways yes you know, possibly on the farm so he, he wants to eat salad mm-hmm. so he has his employees go and look for the freshest lettuce okay let's take a look <laughs> uh, oh. a, there's a common theme by the way he yeah has, i guess he I, there might be some lore behind this but mm-hmm. i think he came from like Poor beggar roots because he has this like old smashed beggar's bowl. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bowls, that's, but yeah. It's smashed and he always has it in the videos. Okay. So I'll look back into it. There's probably some story. Okay. And what's this one? Let's so see. again, you should be into something like polo or something right. fancy if you're okay. rich, but he still likes to play pool, sure. which in China is very low class. Sure, sure. Oh. <laughs> oh, he. <laughs> 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 yes, I like it. I like it. And you do. This is. I think that I thought that was a perfect glimpse into Chinese culture for a couple of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, organized crime, that kind of stuff, runs a lot of the country. Yeah. Number two, a lot of those people again are severely undereducated, so they don't have tastes that have developed in anything sure. else. And number three, the whole face servitude thing. No matter what, they have to please the boss, and it's comical and it's satire, yeah. but it's also commentary on real life in China that yeah. the boss is never wrong. Never, right? Yeah, that oh, was good. I like yeah. that little segment. I thought that was good. So, um, 
Slopaganda time. It's kind of my favorite part of the show, usually. Yeah. Slopaganda, and it's the two sessions edition. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, whenever the two sessions comes up, before the two sessions, they always, for some reason, Chinese state media decides they have to start. Did you, hold on. Did you do Joker Man plot? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I yes, love, I did. You, I can with confidence say you are the only person that ever put two sessions into Joker, <laughs> Joker Man, Man fun. fun. Yeah, it's got to be, right? Sorry, I'm a fun yeah. guy. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So anyway, they always come up with these new, they have to get like a new eye-catching presenter or a new show to kind of make the two sessions appealing to the outside world. And why is that? Because it's boring as all hell. <laughs> it's literally it's middle-aged to old CCP men. Chinese standing there men. saying, like, we will implement this yes. thing now, and you must just accept everything, it. <laughs> everything is 100% fine, but we will do finer. Yes, We will have more growth no matter what, and we will serve the people. Yeah. It's like that for two, two couple yeah. days, for weeks. Yeah, so, I mean, we've done this before. We always do a two-session thing. We always show you they try to do, like, AI robots to make the two sessions look fancy. We've done that before. Yes. They try to get like uh, rap music. Don't worry, the rap video is coming up. It's a tradition. Up. It's yeah. like our Super Bowl. Exactly. That's our favorite. Yeah. Um, and then they always have like a new presenter. So this time around, they dug up some British guy who's kind of fresh off the boat. Um, oh, a new shill. Yeah. And they started a new series of which there's uh, about two or three episodes about him finding out what the two sessions is all oh, about. Oh, I just can't wait. Hopefully yeah. you've made it more interesting. I did. Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> so let's, we're going to introduce everybody to Mr. Loong. Okay. Oh, uh, Mr. Loong. His Mr. Loong. Yeah, his, his surname is Loong. Oh. Well, kind of. Anyway, I'm just going to play it. We're new not shill. Even, yeah. New shill. New shill. New <laughs> shill. Okay. Let's check it out, guys. Here it comes. Oh, wait, this first. Oh, my. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Sorry, this first. Bro. <laughs> Sorry. Is this, is this for real? Yeah, yeah, it is. Again. The uh, power of technology. Yes, yes. I just had to share this story because, you know, like every once in a while, some somebody trying to show how amazing China is and how futuristic China is will throw something like this out there, like unironically. This is play Sarah AI so we can see the alternative. Version. Oh yeah, of course. Yes, young girl and beautiful. Trying to make a three D human. Yeah. Uh, so what they did was took a Snapchat filter of a robot or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Over an actual farmer and said the power of technology. That's correct. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that. Oh, but yeah, my sorry. Uh, <laughs> as promised, here comes the two session thing. Hi, my name is Alexander Long. I'm from the UK. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Wait. His name's Alexander Long. Yeah, it's Loon, bro. That is pretty culturally insensitive. Sorry. Yeah. It's well, Loon. Back to this. It's Loon. Yeah. It's okay. Sorry, unadulterated. I won't, I won't, I won't. Yeah. Here Hi, it comes. My name is Alexander Long. I'm from the UK. <laughs> Two I'm sessions. Well, hello there. Look, Mom on TV. <laughs> Yahoo! It's me again! <laughs> it's the open day for the NPC delegation, and it's also my first time interviewing on such an occasion. We've come here to the NPC conference center to see the activities of the Ningxia delegation and understand the political process in action. I did some research in advance and prepared a few questions, hoping to get the chance to ask them during the press conference. Yay. I'm with China Daily, thank you. I did some research and found out that Ningxia is the capital of computing power in Western China. What are the unique advantages of Ningxia in the development of computing power? And what role does it play in the development of computing power in China? What's the point of my life? I read a question that they wrote down for me and then I don't even get to ask it in Chinese because I can't even speak Chinese. I may as well not even be here. Why didn't they just get her to ask the question in the first place? Need to get home to be tea and crumpets? I don't understand a bloody word. What is this Codswallop? Why am I even here? This is bloody boring. (laughs) 
<laughs> and that was it. <laughs> Get that QR code off of you. Sorry, yeah. I I'm just sorry. Not to go back, right? Yeah. But there's a couple things that stood out to me. Yeah. And I appreciate what you did with that. You made that very interesting when it absolutely had zero it interest. It's so boring. But yeah. this intro that they've crafted for him, by the way. Yeah is so on the nose and so bad. Yes. But I love how he starts and he goes, I'm Alexander Long and I'm from the UK. Yes. Because that's all that matters to them is they got a white guy mm -hmm. from the West to say like they're interested in the two sessions. Yeah, why does that I'm matter? from the UK. Why couldn't it just be I'm, you know, China Daily correspondent yeah. Alexander Long? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Loom. Loom, yeah. I can't believe their own state media screwed up. But yeah. I love what you did with the intro there where he pops in because even without your voice, that yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah, I didn't change the intro. I just, no. I added the voice. But it's like, it starts out two sessions and then it's like, well, hello there. <laughs> I mean, it's like we've got a white guy in a suit. Yeah, they're they're like we got we bought this guy for two hundred RMB or whatever. Yeah. Like we need to use him. Yeah, so it's like okay, we got him here. Look, mom on TV. Let's put him on there too, straight away. Well, and why is it on an old CRT TV? I have no idea. And then. <laughs> they did that. They, you did not do that. <laughs> I just added in the voice. Yeah. Literally, hey, we've got a guy in a suit. We've taken a nice glamour picture of him. How many times can we use it? And then they're like, how about one more time straight away? It's me there again. <laughs> this guy, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you're like an intern or something, because we have nothing against interns. Yeah, yeah. You do what you got to do. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. this was bad, dude. If this, is, if this is your first gig, this is going to be hard to lift down. By the way, I, although I added the voices and I did a bit of editing, I didn't change the duration of the video. Yeah. It's literally this. He's like, hi, I'm going to go ask a question. He asks a question, the guy answers, and then the video ends. That's it. That's it. I love how scripted the question was. Yeah. Like, he did not come up with this. No, and again, it just proves a point, though, because we've all been in these situations to sit and listen to a monologue. He yeah. asks a question that's written down in English. Someone uh, asks the person actually in Chinese, so he didn't need to be there. She could have asked that question, yes. okay? He did not need to ask that question. And then the answer is in <laughs> Chinese, and he can't understand a bloody word. He I just, like how he side-eyes, though. Yeah, he just literally stands there while this guy monologues about whatever the reason <laughs> for Ningxia data centers in Ningxia. And he's like, um, okay, that's great. <laughs> that's all. Uh, you know, like, it's it's so pointless. Oh, my. It's imagine, so pointless. Imagine you had to do this for your job. That sucks. It kind of feels bad for him because yeah. he's probably like what have i gotten myself into yeah imagine you're sitting there and this guy's just waffling on in a language you don't understand and you're like hmm, hmm yeah this is great <laughs> so the only point of him actually being there is that he's a white dude from the uk and it gives a kind of an international feel to the uh you know to the room simon from the in-betweeners fell hard <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> why am i even here <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's move yeah, on. Yeah, well, <laughs> that side. Uh, poor guy. He's, he's I like, swear, this is probably his first gig, too. Because, like, yeah. you don't look at the camera after you've been on camera a couple times. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's just like. like <laughs> is this what's he's going to need a couple of cucumber sandwiches to cool down Ab after this. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so that's Slupaganda number one. Okay. Um, I'll just uh, fast forward past that. Whew. Um, do do we have a sponsor today? We do, and it's oh, AT1. We We'd yes. love to give a shout out before we continue. So we've got uh, two sessions, Slopaganda Part 2, coming up after this. That's right. Taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last couple of years, I've been drinking AG1 every day, no exceptions. It's just one scoop, mix in water, once mm -hmm. a day, every day. It makes me feel energized. Focus, nourish, strong, and ready to take on the day. Nourishment. We noticed that we had some issues that we would like dealt with, um, mm -hmm. and we we tried the whole route. I'll be honest with you, we tried the whole route of taking all the vitamins and doing all this kind of stuff. But when we found out about AG One, we were able to take one scoop, put it in water, ding ding ding, drink it's it. Makes it easy. You're done. You're yeah. absolutely done. You're feeling better throughout the entire day. You got energy mm -hmm. out the wazoo. Yep. It's fantastic. Everything came back. Every every wrong was righted again. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? Yeah, I'd say. I'd say it's definitely very good for your health and uh, can recommend it wholeheartedly. I know with AG1, I'm giving my body high-quality nutrition. And that's not mm -hmm. he quality nutrition, <laughs> no. like Richard from England. Yeah. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process so you know it's safe. And the ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrient density. Mm -hmm. um, 
If there's one product that we had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1, and that's why we've partnered with them for so long. We're very lucky and honored to work with them. Yep. If you wanna to start to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash ADV. That's drinkag1.com slash ADV. Check it out in the links in the description. Absolutely. So it's time for us to move on to some more slopaganda okay but again thank you to ag1 uh for sponsoring the show it's epic so uh you know we all know rick right uh do we yeah you know rick well let's <laughs> play it you know this guy wow so good <laughs> ah, thanks for the endorsement rick yeah um yeah he likes ag1 in my, in apparently my, in minecraft <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so anyway rick has picked up a new skill in fact it's something we didn't know about him what's that do you do you know ventriloquism I do know of ventriloquism, yes. You know, it's like when somebody sits there with a dummy, like a Pinocchio-looking thing on their lap. And... Why don't you make us big so people can see what we're talking <laughs> okay. about? Okay, I'll, I'll get us over here. Yeah, we still got this lovely AG1 <laughs> you know you can fast forward, hanging around right? in the background. Hey, I mean, I don't mind. They sponsor the show. I know, I love, I love AG1. It's like, <laughs> but on. anyway, let's talk about ventriloquism for a mo moment here. So, you know, you got that ventriloquist puppet. Yes. And you know, like how people are really good at uh, like speaking out the side of their mouth and you, you can't even see it. You're really good at it. Anyway, this I've is... Never been I never knew, but this is Rick's, apparently he's really good at this. Oh, he's yeah. a ventriloquist. Yes. Not the dummy. No, no, oh. no. Let's take a look. Let's take a look in his uh, newest segment. I love here. that this is a special two sessions edition. Yes. This March, lawmakers and political advisors gathered in Beijing for the annual meetings of China's top legislature and political advisory body. Collectively uh, by known the way, I checked the sky, the AQI, just because people are yeah. going to come and say it was cloudy. Uh, it was 156 that day. Yeah, 156 yeah, is bad, so. yeah. I mean, uh, a lot of the segments that you see people filming before the two sessions to talk about it and stuff, they specifically, when it was a good day, they're like, quickly, quickly, go. They shot B-roll. Yeah. yeah. They're like, quickly, go shoot the segment in front of the whole of the two peoples or whatever with a blue sky. The two people. Whatever, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? <laughs> the two okay, sessions, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I just got my, my mind on that. people, yeah. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, here's the Rick's little sessions. thing. Two sessions. This is one of the most significant events in the country's political calendar, bringing together legislators and political advisors, ranging from workers <laughs> to state leaders, to deliberate on bills oh, and not, discuss. He's really good. good. <laughs> it's a time to come together, share ideas, and work toward making changes. <laughs> it's a weird way to do that. Yes, I'd say. Economic and social development you can even do it while walking. Yep. Two sessions. The focus must be on advancing high quality development. And this calls for the knowledge and strength of the entire nation. <laughs> it's just good. He's really good. He's Whoops. good. I just thought I'd throw that in there. But uh, now, of course, rather than bore you with more two sessions, build that propaganda, we have our favorite two sessions thing ever. Ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> What, is, what are you looking for? The main events. <laughs> it is the 222 Sessions Wrap. <laughs> oh, sorry. I just, it's a hard cut. I'm more of a hard cut, cut guy. Okay. You know, <laughs> anyway, let's take a look, guys. Here it comes. Every year, if you're new, we do this. Yes. What a wonderful song. How come I've never heard it before? <laughs> Got elation from inspiration Writing a compliment song for the nation While I'm talking about two sessions After wrecking in a section And into four sections To awake your acute vision And reduce tension Just settle down and focus on what I eloquently mentioned About a true essential for countries Wow, so good Air bears the weight of desire Every single needs to acquire Knowledge as human can live without a tire That's why we adore and explore Before we get in wiser So now let me show you all the raw this year's how we got higher You see we the chain and in on the dark side of the moon On the hardness of soft like carbon dioxide in the ooze Oh success is like a weekend car right round the pool So wait, wait, what was that? It's success is like a what? 
uh, <laughs> weekend car ride around, around the, the pool. pool. And again, we've pointed this out multiple times. Again, if you're new here, this is China's attempt. This is Chinese state media rap. Yes. They said, how do we make the two sessions cool? Because again, yeah. it's just a bunch of old guys coming together to talk about things they've already decided. Mm -hmm. So they go, well, let's make a rap. Kids love rap. Yeah. And, we'll and just, Westerners love rap. And we'll just bullshit about China's uh, achievements. achievements, like random things. So they get this guy <laughs> and what they do is what I imagine is they took a thesaurus and yeah. literally got like a rhyming dictionary yeah. and found the biggest words they could about sheer nonsense. Yes. And they said, you know what? Even though this makes zero sense, Westerners will be really impressed they're gonna because love they're it. so stupid they don't know any of these words. <laughs> yeah. But again, the... Hey, uh, it, told, our, it taught me a word, that what? necrophilisis we'll, or whatever. We'll show that in a second. Yeah. <laughs> Again, one of our favorite, and we always point out our favorite phrases. Which is kidney stones. <laughs> a weekend car ride around the pool. <laughs> yeah. Because that's what you do with your children. Yes. You say, kids, get in the car. <laughs> Where are we going, daddy? Can we go swimming? Nope, but we can go around the pool. I was always have in my mind, you know, when you get those like uh, apartment complexes and they have like yeah. a pool area yes. that's fenced off. Yes. And I could just imagine in the parking lot, like He's people driving around, around and around that. Yeah. And the kids are banging on their window like, <laughs> like I want to swim, I want to swim. Anyway, let's, let's not interrupt. <laughs> Yes. What is okay. this? I just okay. want to read yeah. this quote. By the way, he said uh, um, uh, dragon, by the way. Should oh, have said loon. should have said loon. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to show us Chinese manners. I'm still what is, what is waiting this, for uh, that. What does this mean? What do you think this means? Again, we always try to try to break these down. Yeah, this again, we always have to go over this line. Sorry if you've heard this before, but tramp the bygone session. We're the fortitude presence. Tramp <laughs> the bygone session. What is to tramp? I guess you mean to stand, tramp upon. Trample on. Trample. So bygone sessions, you got to trample on them. But a session but it's is not, not a session. session. Yeah, it's, it's like a, like session, a session, like, session, like to cut something yeah. off. Like a, to, to secede or whatever. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Tramp the bygone session. Yeah, you got to trample on that session. Isn't that session. a cessation? Yeah, I think so. Just trample on it, Look, okay? Hold on, let me Google <laughs> session. <laughs> yeah, please. Because we're the fortitude presence. Uh, the formal giving up of rights, property, and territory by a state. Yeah, it's oh, to okay. secede, right? Oh, they're probably like moaning about the um, the 100 years of humiliation, century of humiliation. <laughs> You know, that's probably what it is. Tramp that. Yeah, tramp is it that. A tramp, a homeless person, or a <laughs> or it's you know, like a, a, a prostitute. A prostitute. Yeah, a homeless Isn't that person. A tramp. Yeah, it's but not a, not to tramp. No, you don't tramp something. You trample. Yes, you trample. Yeah, but I, unless the the bygone session was a prostitute, I gotta, don't know. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, tramp the bygone session. Yes. <laughs> it's like this is yeah. what happened. I yeah. figured it out. Okay. I, I guess. Uh, Virginia wanted to secede, secede from the Union. Yeah. And it tried to pull out. It's mm -hmm. like, no, we don't, I'm going to give up my, my rights. We're going to become our own thing, right? Yes, yes. But that was bygone. That's yes. done. Yes, that, yes, that's yes. already in the past, right? Yeah. Now, Tramp, the bygone <laughs> session, it was a nickname given to the prostitute that represented yeah, the maybe. cessation of the state. Possibly. Also, we are the fortitude presence. Yeah. So I guess he's trying to say, like, this is now... Forget the past. I'm trying to, I'm doing that thing. Did you ever have to do this? What? Um, I had to do this and I did it once and then I realized what was happening and I cut it off. But you know when Chinese students study abroad yeah. and they have to do like a college entrance exam, one yeah. of the things they have to do is submit an essay. Yeah. So I was working at an English training um, school and my manager or whatever gave me this freaking word salad of a paper of I, it was nonsense it made no sense and he's like can you edit this to make it make sense and it was as if somebody quite literally had copied and pasted uh, a chinese document or chinese essay or something into uh, bad google translate and it just spat something out yeah 
And I was like, none of this makes sense. Yeah, makes I, sense. I would have to rewrite the entire thing and it still wouldn't make sense. No. Um, and so I was, you know, it was actually really hard work and I'd gotten about halfway through and then I, I figured out what it was. It was one of those essays that they hand in Yeah. and what they would do would get me or other English teachers to correctly write it for them. And then they would submit it so they could pass to go into wherever Canada or the UK, or in this case it was the UK. And that's fraud. Mm. That's freaking fraud. It's supposed to be the the student doing it. It is. That. This rap is very similar. Yes, to that's that. what I was thinking. Because I'm now I'm trying to make sense of this word salad garbage. So am I. My my <laughs> head is still stuck on tramp the bygone session. What I think is, yes, you know right. how like in Chinese the family name comes first. I think they yeah. screwed up. Yeah. This guy. They're talking about a guy. Okay. Right. Um, and he's the fortitude presence. I mean, he is just like he's the now. He's, he's the like, now. He's like, and he's it's a strong now. But bygone session is his name. His yeah. family name is Tramp. So it's bygone <laughs> session Tramp. They just screwed up the word. Order. Maybe makes perfect sense now. Obviously, what they're trying to say here is like the past is is crappy, but you know, like I, chi China was weak in the past, but now we're strong. I guess that's the probably the the TLDR of this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's, continue. let's continue. Sorry. <laughs> Fragrance we're blessing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, presence. Skywalker flies high. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotta throw that in there. Such a tragedy, a clumsy travesty, gas is kind of ho-hum allergy fallacy, making it extremely acidic. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This okay. always trips me up. Yeah, uh, just what? one more time. <laughs> what is what is poverty? It's uh, such a tragedy, a, cl a clumsy travesty, okay, because it's apparently clumsy to be poverty, such right? Such a tragedy, a clumsy um, travesty, gas is kind of... I guess it's kind of ho-hum allergy fallacy. A ho-hum allergy. Is that when, like, it's the opposite. You know when you need to watch those allergies? It's like, oh, I'm poor. Like running no, like, like you're poor. Uh, you're poor. Yeah. It's like, I got no money, but don't worry. It's just an allergy. You know, I'll take <laughs> some medicine. Like, <laughs> it's like, and then it goes, oh, yeah, I'm not poor and anymore. Goes, Claritin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because poverty is an allergy, man. It's an allergic reaction to, I don't know, being in the rural countryside, That's, maybe. It's actually <laughs> so funny how yeah. they portray poverty here. Yeah. It's like, it's like, I, this is nonsense yes. poverty oh that's just embarrassing it's get a, rid of it's this. a fallacy it's a fallacy <laughs> but he's a fallacy well, we never picked up on that i don't know but it's apparently not yeah, real. it's not real it's just a fallacy that actually tracks perfectly <laughs> it does doesn't it with uh, the government saying there's no more poverty yeah exactly but it's also <laughs> it's uh, making extremely acid what? acidy Wait, we looked that up, didn't we, Lawson? Yeah, what does acidy okay. mean? I have no idea. I'm sorry. I don't sorry. know if we ever did. I, I mean, I, I might just be ignorant. Okay, acidy. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> it literally has no definition. Oh, here it is. Okay, what is uh, it? Middle, middle English. Okay, okay, this is not even a, an accepted word. Okay. Via Old French from the medieval Latin acidia, okay. alteration of acedia. Obsolete after the 16th century. Okay. The term was revived later in the 19th century. A synonym would be spiritual sloth. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Making extremely spiritual sloth. Bro the rapper got a job with the state <laughs> and oh, quite geez. literally made a 16th century <clears throat> word relevant again. Yeah. Which means spiritually sloth. Making extremely spiritually sloth doesn't even make sense, but whatever. Okay. All right. What? Okay. <laughs> I love it. All right. Poverty every... solved. <laughs> Dude, this is what I love about this rap music video is every year we find something new. I think we've never repeated a word. <clears throat> we always find a new little bit to pick up. Yeah, exactly. Out. Let's see what's so next. Fun. Yeah. Making it extremely acidly generating native energy jab the ash please get it away from our territory. Nobody should get in with this. It's so demeaning. First poverty is a fallacy. Yeah. Get it away from our territory. Get the F out of here. Yeah, I love this shoe. Nobody poor. nobody get out of here, you poor. Yeah. Nobody should get in with that with disgusting, disgusting pit. pit and then it shows a poor well, lady. She's, she's eating something. Maybe the pit inside the 
the fruit is disgusting. Maybe I it's a guess, disgusting. I think pit. it's. I was picturing a dis like yeah. what China would say a disgusting pit of poor people. Yes, that's exactly like what they mean. Pushing you poor can, people yeah. in the pit. Yeah, that's what they mean. But I mean, the fact that she's eating some fruit or something. It's, it's possible there's a disgusting people. pit in there. It's true. <laughs> yeah. But it's showing rural yeah. people. Like, I really think they're like, <laughs> poverty is not real. It's yeah. disgusting. It's spiritual sloth. And get the F out of here. And if you're poor, you're going in the pit. By the way, um, just a quick update for everyone. China's statistics, okay, from the Chinese government, which, of course, are wildly inflated. Yes. Okay, they're not right. But uh, you know, you know the flat cap, flat cap McDonald's shill. Yes. You know. Oh, uh, flat cap McDonald's. We yeah, he, you McDonald's. know. <laughs> yeah, you know, he eats a lot of McDonald's. That yes. dude. Flat cap McDonald's put out a thing about China lifted all these people out of poverty. What does the U.S. have to say, or what do they do? And then he shows like homeless U.S. people. But the statistics that he released, so you know, he's releasing the best of the best. Yeah. Says that you're not considered poor in China if you earn four thousand RMB per year. <laughs> And that was his... Like 500 bucks? Yeah, that's his gotcha. He's like, look, gotcha. at, look at how amazing China is. They lifted people out of poverty. You know, so many people were lifted to the point where they can earn 4,000 RMB per year. Like 500 bucks. It works out to... A year. Less than 1.5 US dollars a day. A day. So... Newsflash, everyone, if you earn 1.5 US dollars a day in China by China's own statistics... Then you're not poor anymore. Ah, I see. I can see. you live on 1.5 US dollars a day? Um, absolutely not. Dude, like flat cap McDonald's couldn't even afford his one day's worth of food on that, like on, on the yearly thing. Yes. You know what I mean? True. Seriously. Is that, the, is that, oh, that, is that the guy that doesn't know that the stream is on and that he's, yes. mean, to, he's <laughs> yes. mean to the Chinese employees? Yes, it's ah, that, that one, guy. yeah. Oh. Anyway, so just, just so you guys know. Where's my coffee? <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's my coffee? Yeah, that guy. Anyway, the, the whole point is, guys, you see this poverty alleviation propaganda everywhere. But just so you know, just so you know, according to the inflated figures from the Chinese propaganda department, from the Chinese government, that means that means you're out of poverty if yeah. you earn 1.5 US dollars a day. And if you're not, that's a fallacy. <clears throat> yeah. You get, get out of that disgusting Just so place. you know, so th this poverty alleviation thing's wildly overblown. Yes. This unironically <clears throat> has the negative effect on propaganda because when we just rip everything apart. Yeah. Anyway, let's carry yeah. on. So we got 20 cents up from the permanent cast of the poverty, rich love disparity, I believe. It'll be devastated and dying. The folly comes to fancy prodigy. What about the matter? Because she caught the gravity and gravity. We got obsession. We got obsession. For the reference, we bless you. The world we show on fashion. See, we got obsession. Then show your Chinese matter. Trying to find obsession. We the 42 threads. We got obsession. We we got obsession. For the reference, we bless you. Bless that fragrance. Got it. Let me show you Chinese letters. We keep the environment alive. Lies. It's like a summertime paradise. Likewise, butterflies in the light. The large. We yes. always have to pause it on that. You have to. Mm -hmm. Again, what does this mean? I'm sorry for slamming, but here's the deal. <laughs> we come up with theories every time. Yeah. The larch we find out is a type of tree. Yeah. So apparently there's all these larch trees, a yeah. larch forest. I mm -hmm. guess the larch is the forest. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. And then Popeye, we meet him. You meet satisfied Popeye. So remember last time we figured it out. You know, sailors go into port, yes. okay, six months yeah. on the ship, yeah. going to port. And you walk in at the port town there, sure. and you see like a drunken Popeye walk out of a brothel. Okay. That's when you meet satisfied Popeye. What does that have to do with the larch? <laughs> I don't know. To me, again, it's a giant Popeye <laughs> yeah. pops out behind the larch, and he's, you know how he eats spinach? Yeah. He's eating the larch like spinach, and he's getting real strong, and he's just full, and he's smiling. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I think they're probably trying to say, like, eye candy. You know, when you see something really, really oh, pops. pop eye. Or maybe, like, it really like, pops. Like, ooga! <laughs> you, you see it <laughs> like Ren and Stimpy or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it could be something oh, like that. Oh, I never mm. thought about that. Mm. Oh, interesting. Anyway, like, seriously, I think we figured it out last time. It's, you're at the port, and you run into... Sure, I just don't know how you know, that's the large. It's like, I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. He eats me spinach or right. whatever. You know, anyway, let's <laughs> let's continue on.
Piece of wood. Well, you know, I think what they're trying to say here is we destroyed bad. our yeah. environment so bad, but now we've planted a bunch of like homogenous trees that are just ruining the, Again, the ecosystem. Go across China. Yeah. All the trees are homogenous and in a line. It's yeah. crush. It's actually soul crushing because yeah. it's uncanny. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's not natural. It's very yeah. weird. That's what they're saying here is like, oh, you know. Yeah. It's, it's literally like someone, oh, I chopped my own arm off and now I put a bandaid on. Give me praise. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Anyway, let's carry on. Yes. Okay. We didn't let him say it yet because... Uh, He's going to pronounce it for us correctly, I guess. So after name dropping Ready, Ready Player One. Yes, and Hunting Cretaceous. He's about to say, eject all the rapaciousness. Again, what is rapaciousness? Oh, Let's look it up again. Rapacious, like, I guess it's like the it's bad stuff. English. Yeah. I know, I get it. Like, I get it. Oh, rapaciousness is an excessive desire for wealth, greediness. Yes. Yeah, mm. well, yeah, to use it all up. Yeah, right. so eject the, the greediness for wealth, which... Is opposite of what China does. <laughs> its whole thing is a yeah. projection thesaurus. Yes, exactly. Like shaking off ne nephro. Yeah, take us out of there so people can see. Yeah, that. nephro. Ne Lysis. Yes, nephro. Nephrolithesis. Nephrolithesis. The theas theisis. The yeah. Nephro. Yeah. Nephrolithesis. I think it's nephrolithesis. Anyway, that means kidney stones. Yeah. So you got to shake off the greed. Like, like kidney stones. Because that's what you do with kidney stones is you got to shake. You Taylor Swift that shit. I, I feel like. You yeah. shake it off. I feel like you have to pass them. Yeah. So you, I don't think you're shaking it off. I think yeah. he's picturing someone's got, it's just no like, pun intended, wang in hand, yeah. <laughs> shaking off the kidney stones. You that's know? all it could be. It's so dumb. Like, how did they come up with this? He's putting the rap in rapaciousness. Yes, yeah. he is. Okay. Let's, uh, let's hear him pronounce it. Like shaking off that brawl of vices. Long to your handy garden. Yes. Yeah, well, so a lot of people are saying, like, how, why are you guys even bothering for, like, trying to make sense of this because it's obviously AI? This is pre-AI. Yeah, this is about five years ago. Yeah, 2017, I believe, right? Something, Something yeah, 19, maybe? Maybe 19, yeah. somewhere. Yeah, it's about five years old by now, I think. Yeah. But, uh, again, every year they have to come up with something to try and make these two sessions interesting for the rest of the world. And the rap one is probably the best. I know. I don't think they'll ever supersede that. No. It's amazing. I agree. So it's kind of, like I said, it's our Super Bowl. We hit it every year during two sessions season. Yeah. Break it apart. We let you guys enjoy it. And we, and we saw, I saw a lot of people in the chat. Super pumped that, of course, they get yeah, to Yeah, of course. We've got to do year. it. It's once it's, a year. It's like a celebration for us. Anyway, you play in the credits. Yes. I think if you go to the Just YouTube Just to show you, video, that is Xinhua Net. So yes. it is Xinhua, which is like the top state yeah. media news. If you go to... Uh, mm -hmm. To the actual YouTube video, and don't by the way, that's don't. Yeah, you know, yeah, if you if you just happen to see it, you'll yeah. see. I think we had left comments on there like right when it came out, and we were like we couldn't believe it. Uh, they actually, I believe they took it down. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. So yeah. it's there somewhere. You'll find it po possibly. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh yeah. Just... Anyway, before we uh, continue, we'd like to remind everyone that we have a show on Monday. Yes. Um, it's our VIP show, and this is what you missed if you weren't there. So let's take a look. <laughs> so and I'm, I'm happy to see the turtle get some revenge because yeah. I see what happens to those things in China. They cook them alive. Push like wash off. A mouse he says, <laughs> the guy, it's kind of cool. But I got my egg this morning. Yeah. What is this? Oh, you know, desabi. Oh, yeah. I like a bit of desabi every once in a while. Sushi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kleep. 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 Kleep.
<laughs> what? So this Ch- is going Chinese viral humor in. is really bizarre sometimes. Great. <laughs> um, so yes. we had an interesting episode on Xiaoban Ho, which is on mm-hmm. patreon.com slash ADV podcast. Yep. If you join the Xiaoban Ho tier, you will see our Monday show. We have a show every single Monday. It's yep. another China show, basically, with different topics. Yeah, it's completely um, different. Completely different, but I mean, it's another show. It's a full yeah. show. And it's interactive. You guys vote mm-hmm. on the next topics. It's democratic. We have vote clips, which are things that go over the line a little bit. You, <laughs> yeah, vote, you a guys little, vote if you want to More than it. a bit, yeah. We yeah. have a couple weird wild card topics that have been floating around. Yeah. You guys have picked some absolutely insane stuff for us to cover, yep. uh, which you've seen a little little tastes in the ads <laughs> that we've shown you. But it's yeah. the best way to support us to go to patreon.com slash ADV podcasts. It's a fantastic way to get more yeah. content. Yep. It's not lazy content. It's new content every time. Mm-hmm. Fresh stuff. And also, at the same time, it's the most direct way to financially support us as well. Yeah, we'd love to see you there if you have the means, of course. Yes. And if you join the Patreon on any tier, you get access to, you know, tons of cool stuff. Why? Just Dragon Ella said semi-democratic because there is a <laughs> there is something, what, you know, sometimes yeah. propaganda takes over a little sure. bit and we try to influence yeah, yeah, yeah. the vote. It's true. <laughs> anyway, I hope to see you there if you have the means. Of course, uh, we can't wait and we'll be having the show on Monday again. Anyway, it's time for us to move on now to the whole... Bitter pills that China has to swallow. So that's actually going to be our soft power hour, which is our main part of the show. Yeah, uh, yeah we'll try to rip. Yeah, of course. We'll we'll give it as much time as it's due. We're on a schedule, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a little uh, own medicine number one, okay? okay? <laughs> that's a bitter pill to swallow. Yeah. So there's a place called San He in, in Hebei. Guys, this is literally 50 miles away from where the two sessions happened. Okay. So you know there are two sessions in Beijing, mm-hmm. in the in the not so great hall of the people. <laughs> okay, it's kind Mid-hall. of boring. Yeah, that's, <laughs> they're just average kind of uh, commie hall. Okay, so this happened right when they just wrapped up the two sessions. Okay. Okay. There was an incident. Now, first I want to show you what happened to the poor people that try to report on it, and then we'll show you the incident itself. So we showed you this in the beginning. (coughs) Yeah. I'll cough on you next time. (coughs) Yeah, she's not uh, too impressed. So here's... So what's happening here is police manhandling Chinese uh, reporters mm-hmm. that went to this scene. Here's some more footage of this. Now, it's, you're kind of privileged to see this footage because it was scrubbed from the Chinese internet. Mm-hmm. Anyone who tried to share this footage on WeChat, for instance, I'll show you actually, I got a screenshot. Um, a lot of Russian hat wearing cops. Well, you know, nothing nothing is unique in China. It's a copy of everything else. The Chinese government. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, what was happening is here's, for instance, uh, somebody tried to share that video that you've just seen on WeChat. They were just moving her around. Yeah, sure. If you try to click on that video, it says the video cannot be displayed, displayed due to violation. This video has been reported and confirmed to involve non-compliant content. Uh, meaning it was uh, showing something that happened that the government didn't want to see. Yeah, so, see. I mean, guys, here's the thing. This, anything to do with this particular incident was scrubbed. Yeah, you could mm-hmm. see that left and right, too. They were ripping this video down. Now, this is what happened. I'm just going to show you. Okay, and YouTube, please, we don't show anyone getting... No, like, uh, YouTube, chill out. ...terribly hurt here. Not hurt. Yeah. Well, we don't know. We don't show it. No, we don't show the hurt part. Okay. Pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> of course you got to. <laughs> yeah. A little, Get a little closer thing. version of this. Holy crap. Now, um, this woman in red gets bonked on the head a little bit. She's, She's all right. Out. She stands up. She's all right. But uh, in typical China fashion... <laughs> Let's see how many people come to help her. How about these young She's restaurant like, oh, workers? Basically jumped over her, looks yeah. down, walks away. How about these uh, young restaurant workers here? No, no one, no one, anybody? No. Up a kidney. Yeah, and no one's gonna help this poor, this poor old lady, this middle-aged lady. Nope. That's China's uh, worst societal ill right there. Nobody helps anyone who's in need. It's it's a real thing, and you mm. get to see it in in practice like that. I don't know about you, but I'd certainly help her Absolutely. up. Absolutely. My first instinct. 
Now, what you're seeing here looks like Gaza, but it's not. Yeah, believe it or not. This is um, a, little bit. a restaurant exploded, okay? This happens quite often in China yeah. due to gas leaks, yeah. okay? This one just, you know, you could see the devastation. Um, all the cars that were absolutely destroyed in the buildings across the way. Yeah. All the glass, you know, shattered out and uh, buildings across like quite far away. You can see the signs falling off and uh, like an entire building was actually leveled. Yeah. Okay. Not Gone. just, yeah, I'll show you because I've got a before and after picture coming up here. But when you see something this severe, this is of course something that you would expect the local news to report on, right? Yes. And these are all just people's personal phone videos and stuff that got shared around you know, before they got cut, because you can't share these videos anymore. Um, but, you know, when the actual news tried to show up and film, that's when they were manhandled like and war, taken though. away. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, and, of course, it's worth reporting on, right? Yeah, of course. That's why news presenters showed up. They're not trying to expose anything. They're doing their job. <laughs> yeah. Like a huge explosion. A whole building is leveled. I'm going to go report on it, right? That's what a reporter will do. This is why, <laughs> you know, like the COVID deaths. Yeah. Anyway, lots of people were talking about this... this uh, manhandling of the reporters and why is this allowed? All that got scrubbed too. But there's the building, okay? So you can see now it's gone. that entire building, which you can see all those floors are residential. The uh, restaurant's just at the bottom. Yeah. Okay? And then you see above me here is where that building used to stand. Yeah. And you can see the one next to it is completely destroyed too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's quite the explosion insane it's absolutely it insane. all the time though it really yeah does. gas explosions are a big thing in china and this is unfortunately due to the corrupt nature of uh inspections and quality yeah. control like you are supposed to get your gas and so on inspected right but rather than actually inspect it people just take a little bribe and say like oh you passed yeah same with true. the elevators and stuff true. um and this is not ever going to go away in china unfortunately uh -huh. um so the bitter pill that China has to swallow here is now <clears throat> their own news presenters from their own state media <laughs> being treated as if uh, they're foreigners. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's uh, chewing on your own medicine, number one. Okay. Here's chewing on your own medicine, number two. All right? Oh, it's bitter. Okay. <clears throat> the TikTok ban bill that went through. When I say yeah. TikTok ban, it's not a ban, by the way. It's not. Can you explain? Can you explain a little bit about the bill? Well, I have a whole timeline of it. Okay. But before we get into the timeline, the, the TLDR, mm -hmm. too lazy didn't read, is that there is a bill that mm -hmm. says TikTok has uh, the ability to not only push influence operations to 170 million Americans that have the app. Mm -hmm. But also technically has control over the app, period. Well, and the CCP has control yeah, over CCP. the app. Yeah, CCP. And potentially has the ability and has shown in the past has the ability to spy on Americans' data, right? Mm -hmm. Therefore making it a national security concern, right? Yeah. Now, did the government say, the U.S. government say, we are absolutely going to ban this app? No. They proposed a bill that says if ownership is taken away from the CCP, the Chinese government. Yeah, an adversarial country, and there's like four of them. Yeah, Iran, I think. China. It's Iran, China, North Korea, North Korea, and Russia. And Russia. So if, if a, basically an app or a news agency or anything operating within the United States is controlled by one of these adversaries, that's not okay. Because it's a national security yes. concern. That's not a free speech concern. Yes. So if TikTok manages to have a sale or get away from the leadership of the CCP, then TikTok will not be banned. Yeah. So this is not a ban. That's, mm -hmm. That needs to be addressed first and foremost. Yeah. Now, the big thing that you're about to get into here, just let me preface this. The Chinese government has claimed for years now yeah. that it has absolutely no say. It's done everything in its power to make sure it runs kosher. Yes. It runs by American laws. It is not a national security concern. And so, therefore, it would it would uh, be smart to say that the, the Chinese government has, if they have no say in this app, then they're not going to get involved. Yeah. However, they just can't yeah. stop talking about it. No. Well, again, if you're going to pretend as if you have no stake in this app as the Chinese government, why would you fight so hard to try and make sure that the status quo doesn't change? But they said they have nothing to do with yeah. it. Yeah. So, so why are you having your top government officials talking about it? Yeah, exactly. Does that make mean, sense? So uh, here's the foreign spokesperson from uh, China goes and says, 
if national security can be abused to bring down other countries' competitive companies, uh, there will be no fairness or justice at all. It is uh, sheer gangster logic to try every means to snatch from others all good things that they have. I'm sorry, I just I heard something else when he was speaking. It was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Wang yes. Wenbin. Mm. So, I mean, gangster logic to snatch what others have. So what the Chinese government has is what you're trying to say? What is that called? <sighs> That's just straight on projection. So anyway, the fact of the matter is... Um, uh, it's it's hypocritical about this national security thing, okay? Because each and every website and social media application from the West is blocked and banned in China, every single one. And it's some people will say like, oh, that's because they just didn't agree to you know stick by China's laws. That's not true, because I was in China when the first bans started to mm -hmm. happen, mm -hmm. when Facebook was first banned, when YouTube was first banned, and they didn't have laws in place. They implemented laws. After the fact. Yeah, that's that's not even an issue, to be honest. The yeah. fact, not not to mm -hmm. belittle what you're saying, but yeah. like that's a poor argument is what yes, I mean. Yes, yes. What I'm trying to say is that if you're blocking and banning all foreign businesses from running social media apps like TikTok yes. right, in your own country, which is what China does, blocking literally everything. Guess what? Literally. China actually blocks TikTok. That's my point. They ban TikTok. You can say whatever you want, <laughs> yeah. but don't send your foreign ministry out to defend your CCP-run app, by yes. the way. Yeah. And then say that this is a freedom of speech issue and it's bullying on yes. behalf and of that the it's Chinese, just a American it's, government. It's a private company or and It's whatever. a private company. When you block it, <laughs> yeah. TikTok is blocked in China. Mm -hmm. They block TikTok. So yeah. why would they even care if America blocked it? Oh, yeah. I wonder why. Maybe it's because it's a freaking influence operation yes. from the CCP. Why would the criminal government of the Chinese government rush out there to yeah. go and defend this app so hard? Exactly. That's It's very telling. Now, even before we continue, I want to tell you the difference between a ban in China and a ban in the United States. Let's say that TikTok doesn't divest and this bill goes through and TikTok gets banned in the USA. Okay. Okay. By banned, it won't be allowed to be sold in the app stores. Mm -hmm you will still be able to access it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you an example. This remote control is the TikTok servers. Mm -hmm. You have your app installed on your phone, okay? If it's already installed or you sideload it from whatever thing, your app can still talk to the server and get all the information. It'll still function. In China, when they ban something, they block all access to the server. Yes. So for instance, if you're in China and you have the Facebook app or you have the even the TikTok app right now and you try to open it, it just says server not found, yeah. cannot connect, check your internet connection. Because mm. they block the ports, they block the IPs, they block all access to that service. So China actually bans things. In America, it's not banned. Liquid Fox says, it's a force to go public, not a ban. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. It is not a ban. It's not a ban. It's literally saying... Play by the rules. TikTok can remain. Yeah. But it just cannot be controlled by an adversarial government. Does that... I mean, it's not even the same as China's logic. It's a national security logic. Yeah. And most people in the government are on board. By Again, the way. I, another thing I want to say here is because there's a lot of pushback by these, um, uh, you sort of, I, I don't, I kind of want to call them faux patriots. Yeah. Fake patriots yeah. who are like, seen a lot of those. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, our government controls what we see and they want to ban all this crap. Here's the thing. Okay. Just imagine. A Chinese police station opens in uh, New York. I know it already happened. Yeah. But I'm yeah. just saying, let's say one opens publicly. Sure. And Chinese police start going out and arresting people on the streets. Okay. Just because they break Chinese law or something. So they're just going and in arresting. America. In America. Okay. And then these stupid faux patriots say, oh, yeah, well, our police arrest people too. Yeah. So that's what they're saying. Yeah. It it's doesn't okay. matter. It's okay if a foreign adversarial yeah. government can run an influence operation on hundreds of millions of Americans. Yeah, because your government does because it. Because our government does, in your, in your yes, mind, sure. does the same thing. That's the, thing, the place where we have to separate things yeah. here. Is this app um, is controlled by the Chinese government. And, they, and, and that's another thing. People are like, oh, yeah, well, I've gotten banned off YouTube for saying this and that. And I've never been banned off TikTok. And I've never been banned off Weixin. Guess what? Criticize the Chinese government, even a little on those apps, and you will get banned. I made a TikTok account, mm -hmm. put my most mild content on there, and yeah. I was removed for the most absurd reasons and then permanently banned. Mm -hmm. yeah. So guess what? TikTok, 
you never gave me an answer. And I'm a public figure, yeah. right? We mm-hmm. were, I've asked multiple times, I've done like five exposés on sure. TikTok and how much propaganda I found from China on there. Yeah. And there's been studies that the majority of messaging coming out of China on TikTok is propaganda. Yeah, right? yeah. And they've been caught multiple times accessing Americans' user data. But you've never given me an answer as to why I was banned yes. as a public account on TikTok for posting anti-CCP content. Why Correct. Why did that happen? Please tell me, because you've, you've said in court now mm-hmm. that you don't do that. No, but they do. I mean, the thing is, for people that are saying that, well, you know, Facebook and all that censors me, but uh, TikTok won't, it's only because you're criti- you can criticize the American government all you want. Yes. On they any want, app in America. Especially on TikTok, because yeah. that's what they want. You can cause insurrection and you can yeah. try to burn down your entire government and they will allow it. Oh, they love it. Because they want that. They love it. But try to say anything bad about Xi Jinping or, you know, start talking about Tibet or Tiananmen Square or Uyghurs or whatever, and you will get censored immediately. I want to do And there's a, no recourse. I want to do a TLDR before we, we go mm-hmm. on here. Just so you're armed, right? Mm -hmm. Because we've done so much research about this. So you are armed in any potential debate at the dinner table or argument about this bill. Sure. It is not a ban. Not a ban. So every time people push back, whether it's a politician or a public figure or somebody on the media or someone in your school, right? Yeah. And they say, we don't want them to ban TikTok. They're going to ban TikTok. This isn't fair. They're just trying to remove our freedom of speech. It's not, and that's a lie. You can completely discount what they've said after that because they haven't looked far enough into the bill to understand that that is not the case. Yeah, and there a lot of people, when you do call them out on that, they're like, yeah, well, it's a slippery slope because they can just suddenly call anyone a foreign adversary and then that's like block it. That's not how things and... work. No, they didn't of just course. go, oh, China <laughs> bad now. So I know. Say, you, just gotta, okay, you just got to put out there what's out there. But yeah. I love this quote because this guy, Mario, uh, sorry, Marco, he's an Italian businessman out of Shanghai and he always is kind of on the nose with this stuff. And he said, uh, this is top communication must be taught in all political science classes. Complaining about freedom of speech and competition on uh, platform X using VPN to bypass their own law, <laughs> okay, this being unlawful, top level. And this is what's being said by the spokesperson, because by the way, they won't shut up about defending TikTok. They're like, this TikTok bill passed by the U.S. House of Representatives puts the U.S. on the wrong side of the principles of fair competition and international trade rules. Says the country that bans <laughs> all the American businesses. Yes. And that's why I love the fact that readers added context here where they say X, Google, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Twitch, Pinterest, Wikipedia, Reddit, and various other Western services have been banned by the Chinese government for many years. So what is this about fair anything? What is it? China's not fair. They don't play fair. But they harp on about suddenly harping on about the First Amendment in their Global Times articles and stuff, how, where China doesn't have that. How can a country with a zero amendment <laughs> yes. talk about the First Amendment? Anyway, moving yeah. on. We got some good data for you. Mm-hmm. Well, even before that, I caught them out. Okay. <laughs> this dude is a yeah. legend. <laughs> so uh, the Global Times put out an article. It said, in response to the U.S. bill that forces an ownership change of TikTok, China's Ministry of Commerce <laughs> spoke person ha no, sorry he, ya dong, said on thursday that china will take all necessary measures to firmly safeguard its own legitimate rights gotcha that is a gotcha gotcha see how china state media and the government said it would safeguard china's legitimate rights and not tiktok's legitimate oh, rights oh snap cats you out of the bag it. cats out of the bag it's always been china's interests all along oh my gosh i mean you know what's so crazy to me is mm-hmm. if you just shut up about it you probably have a better chance because yeah. this is going to go into the the whole thought process behind the bill yeah is when your government officials are are verifying <laughs> the speculation yes look they are they're after china's interests china's own legitimate rights said by the Chinese government, and the Global Times is state media from China. Oh my God. And the own Chinese, look, this is literally the China's Ministry of Commerce. Oh my gosh, that's a quite a gotcha moment you yeah. got there. Nice call. So they only care about China's interests, and that interest is to use TikTok as an influence operation. And why would they ever give that up? That they've it's managed. The, it's the most important thing they've ever done to the American populace. Yeah. They've managed, and whether it's whether it's overt Chinese propaganda or not, which is yeah. usually not, even though it's in there. Yeah, 
it's dividing the American populace. If they can have an app that feeds into people's worst things, worst paranoias about the government, yeah. worst theories about their their neighbor's political beliefs, yeah. and manage to create that epic, epic rift and destroy, really destroy the fabric of society in America, sure. it doesn't matter whether they get people to like China or not. They've no. already got their goal done. Exactly. Right? But this, this, this article that was put out is clear evidence that the Chinese government is heavily invested in TikTok. The use, Chinese government- Use that in court. Yeah, please. This is the one you could show to your, your friends when you're having an argument. This is the Chinese government going out there and being all blustery about how they're going to defend their legitimate interests and their legitimate rights because That's it's nuts. all about That's them. absolutely yeah. insane. Like yeah. the, am the amount of disconnect that yeah. was between the, the publicity person that wrote this and yeah. the, the actual spokesman. Yeah, because <laughs> like, like, you know, the, the yeah. CEO of TikTok and stuff is going out there like, oh, no, China's got no control. There's nothing about China here, blah, blah, blah. It's our own separate thing. It's not. China is so invested in this that they've sent their foreign spokespersons and their ministries of commerce and all this and nonstop for days and weeks now have been putting out threats. Yes. OK, yeah. from the Chinese government. Yes. As you can see from some of the things I posted here. But let's carry on with this. Carry on, my wayward son. Mm -hmm. Classic me. <laughs> I love this. Me never downloads TikTok China. All right, then. Keep your secrets. <laughs> it's very accurate, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. Okay, so... So I have a timeline here. Mm -hmm. uh, Go for it. from Axiom. It. Yeah. Um, and this is, this is really good perspective on why this isn't some flash in the pan thing that was yeah. just drafted overnight because people are worried about TikTok, right? This was long thought out. Yeah. So the first thing it says, the big picture, FBI's a years long warning. The FBI for years has said that TikTok could pose national security risk, warning that the Chinese government, though uh, through its alleged relationship with ByteDance, that's the parent company, mm -hmm. uh, may be able to control software on millions of devices in the U.S. or conduct influence operations through the app. The concern stems from the Chinese Communist Party's massive sway over private corporations in China, where executives and companies have in the past been punished for not conforming to party lines. The Chinese government said it will oppose any attempt to force ByteDance to sell its stake in the U.S. version of the app, and TikTok has denied accusations that the CCP controls it. So that the rich irony there. Yeah. The CCP, by the way. Yeah says that they won't, or the Chinese government says, no, we won't allow them to sell. Yes. But there's no, no. Yeah, yeah, they, we won't allow them to sell, but we don't have anything we have to, no, do, we have it. Yeah, yeah. to do with it. So they've been warning for ages. <laughs> Trump actually came up with a forced sale, right? Then President Trump spearheaded the initial effort to ban TikTok with an executive order in 2020, citing national security concerns. He pushed for an acquisition by Microsoft, which fell through. Software giant Oracle then made its own bid to become TikTok's trusted technology partner in the U.S., after much pressure, TikTok agreed to protect U.S. data through an alliance with Oracle. So that was the first agreement that they yes, made. Yes. However, that didn't stop China's influence operations over the app because ultimately, if the CCP has any sort of control over any company, period, yeah. they will always have sway over it. I mean, right. and it's been proven again and again mm -hmm. that uh, user access uh, yep. data was accessed from China, yep. you know, that they tracked those reporters. That there's, there's a ton of actual case studies and the, the leaked uh, messages and stuff, the Chinese uh, ByteDance employees can access yes. the data. Remember, this is over the internet. You can yeah. access anything. You don't need to physically be somewhere to access it. They have full access, and even if they didn't, they could fly over here and access whatever they want and implement it's, whatever they want. That's all speculative, by the way. Yeah, but, but that's, it's that's like within reason. Yes, like to, to, to I'm just saying it's that. within reason. This yeah. whole idea of like, oh, we're going to keep the data here. This is not China, yes. okay? Chinese people from ByteDance, the actual Communist Party members, can fly over to America anytime, go into the TikTok offices or access the TikTok servers, or go and tell the TikTok employees, hey, this is what you got to do, and there's, they're going to do it. And again, that's that's all speculative, but there's yeah. been so many uh, interviews with people that work for TikTok yeah. that have corroborated a lot of what you've just said. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Anyway, um, so what, what, what happened in 2022, Project Texas happened. Mm -hmm. In June 2022, after long-standing pressure from the U.S. government, TikTok began routing all U.S. user data to Oracle's cloud infrastructure, and that was to get U.S. data away from China, right? Yeah. Oracle then began vetting TikTok's algorithms and content moderation models to ensure they aren't manipulated by Chinese authorities, right? Step in the right yeah. direction. Yes. The move was a part of Project Texas, a $1.5 billion plan aimed at ensuring Americans that TikTok is safe, their data is secure, and the platform is free from outside influence. The project name refers to Oracle's headquarters in Texas. Uh, TikTok had been preparing to, uh, Project Texas for over a year by separating U.S. operations, backend functions, and code, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the problem. 
Yeah. In that amount of time it took to do that, right? Yeah. You, we were still seeing so many examples of Chinese propaganda being proliferated through TikTok. Still do. CCP talking points. Still do. Content removal based on uh, on anti-CCP talking points. That's when my account was removed. Yeah. Right. Look, at, again, it doesn't matter where the data is stored. Yes. Because you can still tell the algorithm to do what you want. Mm. Okay, it doesn't matter at all. And you can still access that data too, because mm. remember, it's stored there legitimately. And then like uh, somebody in Beijing wants to find out a certain user's data, very simple. Just get the authorized person in TikTok to access it the, for The you. thing is, at the end of the day, if, give a you that CCP, access. If, if a CCP branch is in control yeah. of a company, which every company basically has in China, yes. then you, you can't throw anything away. So in March, 2023, there was a congressional testimony. Yeah. The uh, TikTok CEO, he uh, had a hearing for lawmakers who fiercely advocated for banning the app. Chu at the time uh, repeatedly downplayed the app's connections to China and referenced TikTok's unprecedented data security practices compared to unnamed social media competitors. Still, members of the House Committee on Energy and Commerce came out in, full, uh, in support of a full ban of the app in the U.S. And then, let's bring it up to here, February 2023. Uh, Biden administration action, uh, action. The Biden administrators uh, sought to regulate TikTok and the banned app from federal devices in February 2023. Yeah, they still used it for courting young voters. Mm -hmm. uh, continuing on. Okay. And let's bring it up to modern day. Mm -hmm. May uh, 2023, there was a state TikTok ban in Montana. So right. what happened is Montana said... Uh, we're going to go past this. Yeah. We believe this is a problem sure. and we'll ban it in our state and states can do that. However, yeah. a federal judge in November blocked the ban before it took effect. Yeah. Right. So this is, they were kind of like a canary in the coal mine. Well, they tried. They tried. Right? They tried. Mm -hmm. And then in 2024, Congress moved forward with the TikTok bill. So this is where it stands now. House committee voted uni unanimously last week to advance bipartisan legislation. Bipartisan, if you're not American, means Republicans and Democrats came together and said, yes, this is very bad. Yes. We need to do something about this. It's good when you see that happen. It, it means there's actually a problem. Yes. yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, legislation that would force ByteDance to divest its TikTok app ownership within 165 days. Um the House on Wednesday passed a bill. It was 352 to 65 to one vote. Mm -hmm. President Biden was, has promised to sign it if it passes the Senate. And mm -hmm. some lawmakers indicated over the weekend that they're undecided on the legislation after being inundated with calls from constituents angry about a possible ban. And that'll lead us into some. Yeah, this is, uh, this is where it proves. TikTok actually proved why it is a threat. Yes. So this is what it looked like. 352 people supported. It was basically mm -hmm. almost an even split between Republicans and, Dem Republicans and Democrats. You had some opposition, 65 votes, and we looked into some of those people, and I will highlight some of their arguments against okay. the ban. Sure. Uh, and some people did not vote, of course. You can yeah. always get a little smattering of that. Mm -hmm. Spineless. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at the Republican side of things. And again, this so is... So this is somebody who tried to stop the bill going yes. through. This is not indicative of the Republican stance on the bill. Remember, most Republicans supported the the bill, right? Yes. So this is an example of a Republican that did not support the bill. Mm -hmm. This is Senator Rand Paul, okay? Yeah. TikTok is banned in China, Paul said. We're thinking, or people who want to ban it are thinking, wow, we're really gonna <laughs> defeat the Chinese communists by becoming Chinese authoritarians and banning it in our country? TikTok is banned in China, so we're going to emulate the Chinese communists by banning it in our country. Tell me why that's a weak argument. Well, because it's nothing like what the Chinese government does. No. Uh, like I said, the ban is not even the same kind of ban. The Chinese government doesn't need to pass laws through senates and houses and voting and all this kind of stuff. The Chinese government just says, we don't want people to access Facebook because, you know, then we can't control it. So let's block it. Yes. And they block it the same day without telling anyone. Yeah. I was there. I was there. Facebook got blocked and it was a matter of I was using Facebook and I refreshed the page and it said 404 not found yeah. and it never came back. Nope. Same with YouTube. Same Not with everything vote. else. No, there's no vote. Nobody knows about it. Nobody's told about it. It just goes down. My problem with <laughs> Rand Paul's argument here yeah. is it's wrong. It it's is wrong. not a ban. No. This is not the same as China. So he's saying he's using that really farcical logic of saying yeah. like, we're going to be just like China, just ban a free speech app. That's not what the bill is. What do you think his motivation is? 
we've gotten into that in the past mm -hmm. and it, it is speculative but one of his largest donors is one of the biggest shareholders in america of tiktok well stock. that's probably why his name is rand like the like the money like the currency because oh, that's what it's all about that's a deep yeah. cut that's a deep, <laughs> how many rands did they you know show throw your way so let's look at an uh, <laughs> opposition uh from a democrat mm -hmm. Okay, so that was from a, the other side of the pond. Yeah, let's look at the other side. Not pond. That'd be the UK, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. From the other side of the political spectrum, we have AOC. She says, I'm voting no on the TikTok forced sale bill. Mm -hmm. uh, Ocasio Cortez said in a post on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, this bill was incredibly rushed from the committee to vote in four days with little explanation. There are serious antitrust and privacy uh, questions here, and any national security concerns should be laid out to the public prior to a vote, she added. That they is have. wrong. Ding, ding, ding. Wrong again. Yeah. On the other side of the political spectrum. How long has this been shown I mean, as being a threat? The FBI has warned about this for years. Yeah. People like us and other journalists at New York Times and Forbes and CNN have warned, warned people about this for years. Yes. Employees at ByteDance and TikTok have done questions and interviews that have exposed how it operates for years. How many testimonies have we had in court with the CEO and people that have worked there hmm. for years now? We yes. are very aware of how, how bad this is. There have been very high profile cases and it's not speculation, it's not alleged, actual, you know, TikTok admitting that they, for instance, stalked journalists yes. and found because they had TikTok on their phones, they could use the IPs to find out exactly where they were and they were following them around. Do you want that to happen to you? Do you want the Chinese government to be able to do that to you? Mm. Because they did. They did. They did. And it's been proven. Yes. And they've done tons of things like this. So, you know, come on. So let's look at somebody that agrees with the bill. I mm -hmm. just thought it would be fair to show. Sure. Let's show. We're show showing that. all sides here. We're showing, you know, donkeys and what is it? Elephants? Elephants, yeah. yeah. House Republicans are bringing up the bill through, this is a Republican. House Republicans are bringing up the bill through a special rule that requires two-thirds majority vote, a uh, majority to pass the measure rather than a simple majority needed to pass most House bills. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Gallagher, Republican Wisconsin, uh, chair of the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party and lead co-sponsor of the bill expressed confidence that it would pass saying Tuesday that there is a great bipartisan core behind the measure. And I wanted to highlight his, you don't have to like him, by the way, and his politics. Sure, you don't have to like anyone. Anyone. But what he said, the great bipartisan core behind this, there is something fishy if somebody is in opposition to a bill. To yeah. me, to me, this is to me. There's something fishy if you're in opposition to a bill that is clearly trying to stop a national security threat from yeah. an adversarial government that has done so bloody much to influence the U.S. Yeah. over the past how many years now, yeah. and has just time and time again shown its true colors of what its you know maniacal goals are at this point, yeah. and how much damage it can do through an app like TikTok. Yeah, if you have Republicans and Democrats agreeing on this, that's not like some lobbyist of of like you know coming down from the heaven the heavens saying like i have a lot to a lot of money to give if you say yes to this bill <laughs> yeah it looks a little fishier if you're against the bill yes for a private company that yes. has lots of shareholders right? yes, it's a exactly. little fishier it's a little fishy by the way uh something that i've noticed as a bit of a trend here because of course i'm very very much behind this bill yes. and i very much behind the idea of the Chinese government not having influence over everybody's uh, news feeds, basically. Yes. And every time I've posted something on Twitter, the people that oppose me, okay, the people that are like, oh, yeah, well, you know, the American government's just as bad, this and else kind of crap, right? I go and look at their profiles just as a like a case study. I go look at their Twitter bios, and they're usually reposting tanky stuff, pro-Russia mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. you know, pro-China stuff, yep. all this. And I've come to realize that the people, honestly who don't want this bill to go through, they hate their own government so much that they think the Chinese government is better than their own government. Yes, yes. They really do. Yeah. They have been brainwashed into thinking that the American government is worse than the Communist Party of China. Yes. And if you actually think about that for a second, because they're so freaking ignorant. Because, of course, when you live in America, you only see American politics, blah, 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 yeah. every day. Yeah. So that's, you know what's going on there, right? You're yeah. well versed in that, whichever sure. side you are, whether you're on the, the reds or the blues, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter. But you're so ingrained. It's such a big part. Uh, by the way, I do think it's kind of pathetic as an outsider, just how much politics matter to people. Mm. And I think it's good to 
be involved in like what your government does. But the fact that it it takes over people's lives so much here, yeah, it's kind of pathetic. But I'll give it to you, okay? That's your life. That's your you're obsessed with your government, like you're obsessed with football. Okay, that's fine. You do that, but you're not educated on what the Chinese government is. You haven't been obsessed with them your whole life. You don't know the ins and outs of them. You cannot say they're better just because you don't like your own government. The Chinese government is far worse than the American government. They do not care about your freedom of speech. They do not care about your rights. Okay, and this is what people think. They think, oh, my government, they want to say this. So, you know, China or Russia is better. They care about what my values are. They don't give a shit about your values. In fact, they're so racist and xenophobic that they just have you, you cannot become a Chinese person. You can't go to China and like me, live there for 14 years, be married to a local. You cannot become a Chinese citizen. I cannot hold a Chinese passport. It's impossible. But guess what? A Chinese person or a Russian person or whatever can come to America Mm -hmm. and they can become an American citizen. Yeah. Okay. If you want to talk about rights and if you want to talk about freedom of expression and that kind of thing, America is your place. And your government, with all its faults, is still far better than an authoritarian shit human rights abusing piece of crap government that only cares about its control over its people all right stop thinking the ccp is better than your stupid government okay to cap your excellent speech off i want to Mm. say that those people are the to me the Mm. very evidence that TikTok does work yes. as a psyop influence operation yeah. from China. Correct. It does. They see night night views of Chongqing or something, yeah. and they're like, look how advanced China yeah. is. It's shit. And they get fed. Go live in Chongqing, feed, you'll hate it. 90% of their feed is America bad. Yeah. People are so consumed with America bad because of these influence operations. Yeah. We've seen it. Absolutely. Seriously, yeah. go go live in Chongqing for a couple of years and come and tell me that it's great. Yes. You'll freaking hate it, especially the kind of people that are all about my expression and my freedoms and stuff. They will freaking hate it. Yes, we are dwelling, but this yes. is important. We're going to rip through the, the yeah. rest of this. Okay, now, this is, again, this is proof yeah. that TikTok is bad, all yeah. right? What did Representative Scott Peters say? Democrat California, what did he say? This is not him. Oh. This is something that I, I took out of an article because remember we no, showed... No, this is him. This is his quote at the top. Oh, it is. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. It's from his quote. Sorry. So remember last time we showed you that uh, TikTok put up like a splash screen. Yes. When you opened the app, it said like, let your your representatives yeah. know that you, you're not in support of this ban, okay? Or this, this bill, sorry. So um, you had to dial the phone number on the screen before you could enter the app. So a lot of people were just hanging up when they connected, said committee uh, member Republican Scott Peters. So Rep- that representative. So rep- represent. You see, American yeah. politics don't use REP, okay? Use DEM or REP. Just say representative. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is that splash screen came up and you couldn't enter your TikTok. So, you know, you've got all these teenagers. They just want to scroll through, I don't know, paint buckets falling on people's heads or whatever, right? Sure. That's or what some they love. St- stupid dancing bikini thing or whatever. Yeah. That's all they care about. So they want to see the dancing bikinis. Okay. They're sitting on the, on the toilet. Okay. They're about to pinch one out and they just want to see that. And this thing pops up that says phone to show your support, right? And they like, get the hell out of here. But there was no way to close it. There wasn't a little X, nothing like that. You had to click call. So after you finish the call, then you're allowed to go watch your stupid bikini crap. So they would click call and then hang up immediately because they just want to get into the app. I love how unbelievably (laughs) intrusive that is. So um, the thing is... um, Later, TikTok said like, oh, that was just like a design error that people couldn't see the X, but we fixed it later. You know, the X to get it. Of course, that's rubbish. They were trying to force their entire user base to spam the American government. Yeah. All right. I mean, if that's not an influence op, then what is? That's a freaking What it is? Yeah. So some users said on X that they were unable to use the app before placing the call. TikTok told the New York Times that users could swipe right to get rid of the messages, which... Uh, may have been confusing because users typically swipe up to see the next video on the app. The company also said that the X to close the page wasn't visible for some users at first, but that it uh, later fixed that. So by design, they made it so that people could not enter the app without phoning their representative. That's insanity. Yeah. That's insane. It is. It's blackmail. 
It's literally black. It you want to you want to see those bikini dancing turd burglars, whatever the hell you do. <laughs> I don't. You know what I mean. You want to watch Orbeez being poured into a swimming pool. Yeah. You want to see that? Well, yeah. you phone this government office and complain first, and yeah. then you get to see your bikini garbage. Yeah. Honestly, that's what it was. Yeah. How how much of an example do you need that this is a very influential? Well, let's app. keep showing stuff. Okay, because dude, the Chinese government just needs to turn something like that on. Yeah. Say like, oh, you want to see your bikinis? Go do this first, you know? Right. You so, bikinis. Well, that's what people watch on that crap, stupid dances and stuff. Um, Representative Andy Barr says, the Chinese Communist Party is using TikTok to spread lies to my constituents. This is not a TikTok ban, but yeah. would strip ByteDance, an arm of the CCP espionage, from the ability to spy on American citizens. I look forward to voting in support of this bill to protect national security. Here's here's another thing that shows you how intrusive this app is. When you click call a representative, it knows where you live. It knows where you are. So Yikes. it automatically connects you to your representative. Oh, because it's like GPS. Yeah, because look yeah. here. When you click call now, it says representative Andy Bart, District K6. Tell them to stop a TikTok shutdown. No CODs. Call now. Do I mean, do you understand how bad that is? Yes, I am very aware. Sh- so they know your representative. Yes. The Chinese government the knows. The Chinese government knows your yeah, representative. knows exactly who oh, your well, representative is. Oh, about the data stored in American soil. It doesn't matter. No. It's still owned by China. So, hey, guys. This is crazy. Doesn't it Ima- just... <laughs> imagine supporting this. Imagine not supporting this bill after being faced with what they've done. Yeah. I could see being skeptical about the bill leading up to this. Yes. Like if you didn't, if you didn't know anything. If you yeah. Didn't, if you're not like a China watcher like us, right? Sure. But after the response of what they've done to users in mm-hmm. this death throes of trying to get it not banned or whatever, sure. I think you'd be crazy. I think you'd be crazy not to support it. Yeah, it's you absolutely know? insane. Um, so, yeah, this is, again, proof. And then they haven't stopped there. They've just released this today, okay, to say um, TikTok is Uh, Back again, lying about our bill. This is the Select Committee on the Chinese Chinese Communist Party. Uh, The first two times, number one, um, it was voted 50 to zero. And number two, it was voted uh, 350 to to 65, as we know. Our bill is not a ban. It allows TikTok to divest from CCP control. One thing they have right, the Senate vote is coming soon. (laughs) (laughs) So you see, TikTok has just put this out. Your voice can protect the community you love. And again, they're like, basically let your uh, representatives know, Mm. spam your government, annoy the crap out of your government, do our bidding because we need you to, you know, influence politics (laughs) right there. So again, this is absolute proof of how powerful this app can, can be and how influential it can be. Yeah, what do we got here? Well, <clears throat> it's only fair to throw in a little bit of this kind of nonsense here because you got Tucker Carlson, for those of you who don't know, is um, somebody who's very impressed with think, Russian supermarkets, I'll yeah, tell you that much. <laughs> seems like he's getting on board with some Chinese talking points as well these days. I, again. I, also, I, think, I, I think his name is called America Bad, isn't it? Isn't his nickname? <laughs> yeah. Tucker, yes. Carlson, Tucker America Bad Carlson? Pretty much. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, from a very popular uh, conservative talk show host I, I think it's just america bad it's beyond conservative now well i mean that he went from yes, that yes. to being yeah. a full-on uh russia and china shill he's now got russia uh, sorry chinese uh social media accounts and yeah. he's going down that route so you know it's just, it's an unfortunate thing to see yeah. somebody who seemed fairly reasonable to like, or at least like a patriot yeah. Yeah. yeah he seems very very against america these days so anyway um he put out a thing saying this is republica and uh this is that represent Come on, again, this is representative. He's Republican, though, isn't he? He is. So there we go. This time and I was this right. This time you got, yeah. because of the clocks, you know, what <laughs> yeah. is that? The clocks, yeah, right. Yeah, right, at least the broken least. clocks, right, at least once yeah. a day. Yeah. yeah. So this time, uh, Representative Dan Crenshaw, who, by the way, looks like a, a Marvel villain oh, or we something. All know. We you all know, know, with he's his got eye patch. patch. Pretty cool. He's kind of cool. I like his profile pic. Um, I don't know about his politics, but he looks cool. <laughs> he looks cool, yeah. Um, as he walks out of the Capitol after voting to give Joe Biden the power to shut down news sites that dare to challenge Do him. Do you see how loaded that language is? Yeah. That is such nonsense. This bill is not a Joe Biden thing, by the way. No, this, he this said bill, he would sign it because he supports it. He didn't come up with it. This, this bill has... Literally bipartisan from both sides, yes. and it's the select committee yeah. on the Chinese Communist yes. Party has put this together, right? Yeah. This isn't lobbyist. It's got yeah. nothing to do with Joe Biden. Um, and uh, I like how it's like uh, the power to shut down 
news sites. TikTok is not a news site. It's used <laughs> it for news. It freaking better not be. Yeah. It's a stupid dancing monkey thing. But yeah. a huge uptick right now in adults are getting their yes, they get uh, news, the news from TikTok. Of course, because you're scrolling through your, yeah. your, your dancing monkey bikini crap, and then all of a sudden it's like... Monkeys and bikinis now. Wow. Yeah, well, you know how it yeah. goes. It, that's how the algorithm works. Yes. It figures out what you like. <laughs> you're, okay, so you're it's very telling right now. <laughs> it's going through this crap. And then yeah, someone will call in a bikini. <laughs> exactly. Uh, getting force getting fed in fed. a cave, you know. <laughs> yeah. Monk bang, dude. <laughs> yeah. So you're doing that. And the next thing that comes up is somebody who says how much they hate American this and that. Yes. And how China is cool. I bet you if you're going through this bikini crap, you're going to get a, a flashy video of a Chinese city at night saying yes. how advanced China is. Yep. I'm just saying. So anyway, he's trying to paint this as some kind of a, a, a Joe Biden thing when it's not. Because right? he knows that's going to rile up his, his followers. Yeah. That's the problem. Oh, yes. so you're trying to tell me that all of these very conservative Republicans have met up with some very liberal Democrats and shook hands on something that they deem a very serious national security threat, and all of a sudden now it's about pop politics and populism. Yeah, bullshit, Tucker. That's bullshit. This TikTok thing is not a Trump-Biden thing, okay? No. It is literally a CCP influence operation thing. So it doesn't matter if you're a Trump supporter or you're a Biden supporter. I am not going to judge you either way. Again, no. I'm not American, so I look at this political this circus. This is not that. Yeah, it's got nothing to do with that. It's got to do with, hey, the Chinese government controls this very influential app. It's like as if the Chinese government had a news broadcasting propaganda outlet in America. They have many anyway, but I'm saying yeah. like a big one. You know, like just say CCTV that puts out positive stuff. They've got the biggest station in New York. They broadcast Danner, your TV. Danner you know? 253 has a really good point. It says you got to <coughs> stop with the red versus blue stuff and actually yes. look at for the stuff for what it is. And that's what this House Select Committee has done. Yes. they. This is beyond... Uh, gender politics or whatever people the the soup du jour is for people yeah that gun get control gun control or any of this stuff this is a very serious issue that people are agreeing upon because it's very bad yes and take it from us people that have been watching china and live there for over a decade yeah it is very bad yeah so please again we want to take these the, the american politics nonsense circus infighting stuff out of this because China is using that to yes. try and prevent this from happening. And Can they're you, very clever. Yeah, let's finish reading these. Okay. So anyway, Tuck, says, Tucker says, uh, okay, Crenshaw tells reporter Liam Crossgrove that U.S. Crossgrove. Crossgrove, doesn't matter, whatever, some reporter's name, that U.S. <laughs> intel agencies do not meddle in domestic news coverage when, of course, he knows that's untrue. Watch his face as he says it. Liar. So what did Dan Crenshaw say back? He says, Tucker lying for attention as usual. Maybe since he lost his production assistance at Fox News, he can no longer do basic research or read short legislation. It's very short. Yeah. Nothing in the TikTok bill gives anyone any authority to shut down news agencies. And that's, that should be, you should be accountable for saying such nonsense. Yeah. It's a lie. Exactly. What, what Tucker said. Yeah. He says, Tucker's mad about a bill that simply stops the CCP from stealing the data of tens of millions of Americans and using TikTok to push their propaganda. 90% of conservatives in the House voted for this bill. None of this is surprising since Tucker never misses an opportunity to defend America's enemies and, of course, garner some clicks on his Chinese TikTok account. <laughs> it's pretty obvious yeah. what's going on here. This yeah. America bat, it's like we have reasonable Republicans, we have yep. reasonable Democrats, right? Yep. And I think this type of bill has really brought out some reasonable politicians. Yes. And they're agreeing on something. And then you have a third party in America. And I think this party has been created by Russia and China called yes. America Bad Party. It is the America I, Bad Party. I think party. America Bad could run in America and win today. Yeah, they could. I'm not even joking. Yeah. You could have people like Tucker and all those people represent them. Yeah, the Hinkles and Tuckers and yeah. the whatever else in between. You could, you could have that running as a party as an yeah. influence up from mm -hmm. China and Russia. I think they'd win. Yes. Absolutely. Anyway, guys, uh, now the actual ambassador... American ambassador in China had a couple of words on this we wanted to share with you. Let's take a look. Yeah, this is We've heard a number of complaints from the government here in Beijing this week about uh, the American debate on TikTok. I find it supremely ironic because government officials here are using the X platform to criticize the United States. They don't give their own citizens the right to use X, to use Instagram, to use Facebook, to have access to Google. And so uh, it is ironic indeed 
that the government here is complaining about a process when they shut down access for 1.4 billion Chinese to all these uh, platforms. Every country has a duty and responsibility to protect its national security. And what the president has done over the last year and a half is to make it impossible uh, for sensitive American technology, advanced semiconductors for AI purposes to be sold to China because we know it will happen. We know that the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, will take advantage of that technology to strengthen itself at the expense of the American military. We're not going to do that. We're not going to compromise on national security, and we're not going to negotiate. And you can bet that the, that the government here in Beijing is taking similar measures. They have not allowed, for most of the last 20 years, the export of core, sensitive national security applied Chinese technology to the United States. And so, you know, every, every government, and certainly our government, has a right to take these decisive steps, and that's what we're doing. I also talk to a lot of businesses, and we all know about the FDI numbers, foreign direct investment, uh, down to the lowest gain since 1993. There is hesitation, yeah. not only because of the economy is weak, but also because of the myriad of different national security and the opacity of such policy, especially coming out of the National People's Congress, we didn't get a lot of clarity on policy. We do know, and you were in that uh, 60 Minutes interview where you did talk about U.S. companies such as Bain and Company, Mints, and others who have seen raids and they've seen uh, arrests of U.S. citizens. Can you, can you elaborate on the threat and the pall that has been cast over the investment community and doing business, Americans doing business in China at this time? I think this is a question central to the U.S.-China relationship for the next year and, and the year beyond. Uh, we have a $575 billion two-way trade relationship. China's the third largest trade partner of the United States. There are thousands of American companies doing business here. Here's the problem. They're hearing conflicting signals. Some senior Chinese government officials say private sector investment is welcome in China, your investment will be protected. But then these companies are also hearing a different message, whether it's the raids against American companies of last March and April, whether it is the opacity of the um, counter-espionage law, where espionage is defined in such a general way that normal activities in any other country of the world, the collection of data, could be construed as espionage. And so we see American firms backing away, or at least being very cautious about investing a lot of money here because they're not sure where the lines are. And I think the voices that they're hearing from the government here in China about national security, they're the strongest and loudest voices right now. How, it's pure Sorry. irony mm -hmm. and, and epic epic win from Ambassador Nick Burns. He's been he seems very, like a very reasonable man. Very brilliant on the whole China policy mm -hmm. stuff. And I think he, what he said is so telling. It's the sheer hypocrisy of this whole thing. Yeah. Sheer hypocrisy of China trying to have a say in this TikTok ban bill. Yeah. In them banning all of these things and bullying out American businesses. They banned TikTok. Under the guise of national security. They banned TikTok. Yes. How, I mean, how stupid is that, that they oppose the banning of TikTok with so much fervor and like, you are so bad to try and ban TikTok, but they banned TikTok. It's just... Nishwani Zizi. Nishwani Zizi, ma. Yeah, CCP. yeah. <laughs> You're talking about yourself there. You know, wow. pot calling the kettle black. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, we are on we, a schedule, guys. Yeah, we're on a schedule. And we wanted to remind you all that we actually have some merch. So if you would love to wear something like this, if this is something that uh, tickles your fancy, floats your boat, so to speak. Take us out of it so they can see the link, yeah. Sure. Everpress.com slash profile slash the China show. Limited time only. There is the... the um, Mm -hmm. normal logo china show hoodie right now limited time only i think it's only a week left yeah and then if you go forward there's a couple uh items you can pick up there oh, as well. there's a couple items our um our first run of our first logo the china show merch um that we sold before in a limited run of hoodies is now available on the uh china show ever press profile in long sleeve t-shirts as well yes 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 i believe we're going to be getting some beanies in as well great so stay tuned for that yeah can't wait mm -hmm. Cover so, up that bald spot <laughs> with a China show beanie. Yes. Blow into your hands in a cold alley somewhere <laughs> with a burn barrel and sleeveless gloves. You know, I mean, fingerless gloves. That's you know, sitting on her own merch. <laughs> you know, with hell? your beanie on. You know what I'm saying? You know that's what's going to happen. You got a dollar? <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, Beanie's just Methylated not my style. <laughs> yeah. Drain it through bread first. Yes. Um, okay, we've got one last section, which is actually worldview. And we've just got one thing that we're, we're not even going to talk about it, really. We're just going to play a little segment for you, and then we're going to get straight into the Q&A. Yeah, because we are right Okay, but this is super, super important. And this is in the UK this time, okay? So we can finally get away yeah, from the whole America we thing. Are getting, again, we yeah. apologize for getting into American politics, but this is very much involved with China yeah. right yeah. now. So. so let's take a look at this. This is super important, guys. Um, let's go for the it. The Free Speech Union recently celebrated our fourth anniversary. In those four years, we've helped 2,300 people in cases where they've been cancelled or punished. This case is one that everybody needs to pay attention to. Why does China have so many slaves? That question is at the heart of a case that has seen an academic reprimanded and her academic freedom curtailed after claims from a handful of Chinese students that this provocative question had left them feeling distressed. One of the Chinese students stood up and in a slightly cross voice, asked why I'd asked such a provocative question. That could have been the end of the matter, but instead, a few days later, Michelle went to try and communicate with her students via the online learning platform that the university department uses. I found that all of a sudden I wasn't able to edit my own module, I wasn't able to upload my teaching materials, I wasn't able to email my students. One of my teaching colleagues had turned off my editing rights. And was that the first moment where you thought, I'm in some kind of trouble here? So I was quite dumbfounded about it, but after some time of backwardsing and forwardsing, I managed to get my editing rights reinstated. That could have been the end of the matter. Absolutely. What happened next? Teaching colleagues then really strongly pressured me, had a meeting with them, and I would say it was extreme insistence that I drop the exercise for future years. There's an irony here as well. You were presenting this slide and you were asking your students to, to criticise it. Yes. Michelle then emailed some of her colleagues asking them to defend her right to academic freedom and to recognise the fact that her academic freedom had been infringed. Three days later, I was told that there had been two report and support allegations submitted against me. Your colleagues made a complaint against yes. you anonymously. Yes. And they did so via this report and support portal, which yes. is usually used to report sexual harassment, bullying, other forms of harassment, that kind of behaviour. And yet your email promoting academic freedom and saying it should not be curtailed was deemed to be sufficiently serious to go through the report and support procedure and then to be taken up by the department. Is that right? Exactly right. These allegations included that I had done this challenging question in class, that I had picked up um, some cheating um, among a tiny number of students, and that included Chinese students, that I had um, done a social media post about academic freedom in China, and they were saying that... Um, it was a problem that I was asking my, my Chinese students questions in class, even though I ask all my students questions in class. Michelle was then told via email, we have a collective duty to ensure all students have a good educational experience at UCL, and in order to be commercially viable, our MSc courses need to retain a good reputation amongst future Chinese applicants. If there was um, one or more students who were complaining, it was clear that they didn't have a good reason to complain. So the fact that staff added to those complaints, I was, I was flabbergasted. Michelle Shipworth has been asked not to tweet about China and told that doing so is too, quote, problematic. She's been told not to use China as a case study. She's been told that she can't teach her course. She's been told not to ask individual students questions in seminars. She's been told that her asking this question about slavery in China meant she needed to read university rules on bullying and harassment. And all of this justified on the basis that UCL needs its courses to be commercially viable, in their words, to Chinese students. The Free Speech Union has now written to the provost of UCL, asking for all of these restrictions to be overturned immediately. There can be no basis for them, no defence of them. Michelle has the right to academic freedom, to freedom of speech. And we will defend that right. 
Yeah, so that's kind of a bit uh, concerning, but it's something we've seen before. Yes. If you do live in the UK and uh, you have any way to um, contact the UCL, I do suggest strongly that you write in with your concerns because we cannot have China censoring what's taught abroad. We just can't have that. It's not okay. No. You know, um, history is history and facts are facts. And especially in academia, we should be able to discuss realities in life. Agreed. You know? Yeah. So anyway, guys, it's time for Yamcha. This is our Q&A section where we answer your questions and you question our answers. So far, we hope you've enjoyed the show. We're going to, of course, do this live. We keep it up for the weekend. On Monday, we cut it out of the show. So uh, if you're not watching this live or on the weekend, we bid you...